church that has accepted addiction. Yeah. We sat in that second row in our orange uniforms. Mm. Our tops, our beautiful tops. And we were accepted. Yes. Those past, they accepted us. Yeah. But other churches you go to, we want to hide behind it. Hey, hello. Let's not talk about addiction in this church. There's no addiction here. In the entry camp, there's no addiction. <laughs> and I say that because I was invited to speak at the Belleville entry camp. <laughs> and the one woman said to me, but there is no addiction in this church. <laughs> and I said, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get that one right? Yeah. <laughs> no. When you tell the truth to people about addiction, they cannot accept it. No, they deny it. Absolutely. When I was on a park bench, ladies and gentlemen, a couple of years ago, when I was sleeping in Yilbrow when I left Cape Town, yeah. going down to Durban because it was nice and hot in Durban, yeah. lying on the beach, homeless, faithless, and toothless. Because I've got false teeth. Sure. <laughs> I heard Jason say something now. I heard, I heard Jason say he's an educated man. Yeah. I wrote the trick. Yeah. And they get to reply. They've never written back to me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the stupid things I've done through addiction, I'm, and I'm probably going to embarrass my girlfriend now. <laughs> I've been married three times, I've never had a wedding anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> I went alone on honeymoon to Mauritius. <laughs> <laughs> I was insane, ladies and gentlemen. The drugs and alcohol made me insane. It didn't mean I was a bad person, but on the 28th of June, 2005, I was set free. Yeah. Amen. I put down the drink, I put down the drug, Ooh. and I said, that was it. Please, God, take control of my life. Yeah. No rehab. Yeah. Yeah. I had held my father and my mother hostage, and that is what is happening in the homes today. Yeah. The children are holding the parents hostage That's true. because they know they're going to get bailed out. Mommy's going to be there with a safety net the whole time. Yeah. We need to stand up and be men. Yeah. When you're 18 years old, when we went to the army and bring the police, we became men. Yeah. Yeah. Reintroduce national conscription so they can go learn a better discipline. Yes. Otherwise, what are we going to do, ladies and gentlemen? Mm -hmm. Are we just going to lose a generation? I talk at a funeral of a young I think it was 19 or 20 odd, 21, 22. Some of you know Chris Wonderful. He died. And there was a big photograph of him, my photograph. And I made the comment, let's keep the, the frame there. Just change the picture. Hi. Just change the picture because the people are dying like flies. Um. Yeah. We go to the cemetery. I've got a weird girlfriend, she likes to go to the cemetery to see who's died. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we went to go look for my, for my grandfather's grave. And we spoke to one of the day, grave diggers there. And he told us the percentage of people dying, of young people that are, that are dying. Yes. Our young girls of 11 and 12 are selling their bodies. Yep. Our young men of 11 and 12 are selling their bodies. Yes. We've got no role models left in this country. Right. If Julius Malema should use his voice and say, I'm going to do something about addiction, maybe we'll get somewhere. Yeah. But he wants to nationalize a mind when the people are dying. Yes. Can you explain that or is that evil? <laughs> we need to get the priorities of what we want to do in life. Our mothers and fathers. Have respect for your mother and father. That's right. Yeah. You know, we see it in people that run into rehabs and they're going to rehabs. It costs money to go into rehabs. That's right. It, don't, it just doesn't grow in the back tree. Mm -hmm. It angers me. It angers me of the people who leave the church and suddenly decide that they can do everything on their own, but as soon as calamity happens, 
Pastor never please come help out here immediately. Yeah, that's true. But I've got 15 other appointments for the day. Then it must be two minute noodle recovery. Equal up nowhere. May she and a maid doctor with no rest call. You know, the first time, Pastor, that I knew what the word freedom meant was when I was locked up in Paul's more prison. Because yeah. then I couldn't go to Mummy's fridge anymore and just help myself and ate the fridge and ate for D years and die years. <laughs> I couldn't go to the toilet and close the door. I had to go to the toilet and have 60 Aurukas looking at me. <laughs> And then did I cry. But I couldn't let the Oruka see me cry so I had to cry. Yeah. <laughs> please, Mom. Please, Mom, help me. Yeah. The calls that I get, the love of a mother, the calls that I get are 99.9% from my mother. Yeah. Yes. And it's not because I'm a good looking oak. No. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> it's from the mother, the love of a mother. And I tormented my mother and father. The biggest regret, now listen to me children, the biggest regret that I've got in my life, the biggest regret is that I, I could never apologize to my father before he died. Yeah. My dad got Alzheimer's disease and before he died, I looked after him, I sobered up, but he already had Alzheimer's disease so I could never say, I'm sorry dad. Yeah. <coughs> But I stood that day at, his, at the eulogy and I gave the eulogy for my dad and I was sober. <coughs> Don't ever, ever, young people, I'm talking to young people, these old people, you've got your own brains, you know what to do. <laughs> Don't ever let your mother or your father go and you've been using them and you've been tormenting them and you've been putting them through hell. Mm -hmm. It's something that you'll never lose. Yeah. You'll have that feeling in your heart, like Jason said, the feeling he has in his heart. And what mother wants to bury a child? I'm going to close off now, because I've said what I wanted to say. Addiction kills young people. That's right. Addiction kills. Yeah. You don't have to be... I'm so proud of you young people that are here. Yes. So proud of your young people. You could be out there. Let them be out there. Let those be out there. Because one day we want eternal life, don't we? That's right. Let's love each other here in this in this facility. There can be a hundred people here, eighty people here, it doesn't make it doesn't make a difference. But if it takes home, if one person takes it home and pass it on, we use it for themselves. Yes. We've done our job. Yeah. On that farm, I'm going to close off with the word gross, but on that farm there's seven, there's seven young men. I've got seven bodyguards. Yeah. Hey, mm. men. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got car and another bodyguard, and if they'll need another one, and I do nothing, but I shower on my own. Keep it simple. And these boys, when I say boys, I say that with affection. Yes. Almost my children. God has entrusted those people into my life. Amen. I'm answerable to God whatever happens to them. Yes. And I must teach them respect and I must teach them discipline because they're not going to walk through nothing then. Because I'm not going to send them out for those who are going to go out and have a mother or father phone and say, what did you teach my child? Yes. That's right. I must teach them exactly what I know about addiction yes. from my story. Not from a storybook, but from my story. I'm going to close with the word grace. I love grace. Like amazing grace. I don't know if I've ever said this in front of Colin, but in my three weddings, amazing grace is always played as, as one of my songs. <laughs> <laughs> because I really love amazing grace. You know what <laughs> And all three were sung at my different weddings. I think the songs lasted longer than the weddings, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the G, the gratitude. Yeah. The G in grace is the gratitude. Yeah. The gratitude that I am saved by a loving God who gives me, Anthony Hall, the drunk, Anthony Hall, the recovering addict, yes. a fall for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. 
and give me such wonderful people yeah. to help in their recovery. Yeah. What greater gift can a man have than to help other people recover right. from anything? Mm. What greater gift can a man have to pass the people? Yeah. And I'm not past the friendly love. But maybe one day you never know. Well, I'm always a church there on the box. They'll say, Pastor, you come over and you come free from that bomb. Because it's coming soon, people, that the people are going to start coming back on their knees to God. Amen. Those who are laughing today about us are going to come back on their knees. Yeah. The gratitude that I could bury my father sober. The gratitude that I could look after my 79 year old half blind mother. Sober. Yes. The R is for respect. Today, Anthony Hall has got self-respect. Yeah. Yes. I best smartly tonight. Not for me to look smart, out of respect for my audience. Yes. Lovely. I can have respect for other people now. I didn't have respect before when I was bugging. As Jason said, we're not going to talk war stories. No. We talk war stories here, we're going to be here till next Sunday or next whenever. Yeah. Today is about gratitude. Yeah. The A is the acceptance. I accept today I have a fatal disease. But there is a cure. There is the cure. Yeah. If I trust God, clean house yeah. and work with others, I will stay sober. I have to stay sober. It's promised to me. Yeah. Yes. God's promised it to me, hasn't he? Yes. And since last I heard, he's never gone back on his word. Yeah. Although I was faster, you'd be preaching yeah. nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the C is the courage. Yeah. The courage to accept the things I cannot change. Yeah. And the courage also to change the things that I can. Out of God's will. You know that other night, one of the greatest things I've seen in my entire life. And I've seen a couple. But the greatest thing... One of the greatest I've seen in my entire life. I was pulled by Jason to the big room of where the guys sleep. He said, come look at this. And I walked in, they were all on their knees praying. Oh, man. Oh. Just feel it, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yes. Can words describe it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they E, the empathy. Yes. But they're still suffering alcoholic and addict. The alcoholic and addict from the poorest of the poor who can't go to any rehab because there's no finances. That's right. Helen Zeller's not going to do it. Jacob Zuma's not going to do it. They don't care. And they're not running them down. That's just the government. There's a five month waiting list. What happens to the poorest of the poor? Well, it devastates. We sit here tonight comfortably yep. in a beautiful church. Yes. Blessed. I don't care how many heads here or how many people here. I'm not here to be an Oscar. I'm here to carry a message of hope. Yes. So I just want to thank everyone that there but for the grace of God go on. Everyone, especially the youngsters who came here tonight. The families. Yeah. The families who came from Cape Town to support their children. <coughs> the sisters who came. Yeah. <coughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. But they know as well that their children must not play games with their mothers and fathers. When they leave the farm, they must put into practice what they learned there. That's right. There isn't an open season and an open wallet go we'll just send him back to the farm. Yeah. We all have to take responsibility for our own recovery. Yeah. I must take responsible, re responsibility that Anthony Hall doesn't drink again yeah. or doesn't do drugs again. Right. And I close with this, Pastor. And I thank you again from the deep, from my heart. And you know you are loved by our men. And I don't have to cut cake with the Pastor because you can come into these doors for free. I'm not going to get past a free pass for coming here. You're coming here for free. <laughs> but we were discarded by the community where we've come from. Yeah. We were bad people. Yeah. I would look a horse like a means to change the number. Maybe you could dress a man up in a suit and 
doesn't take him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I could have described recovery to everyone here tonight. <laughs> there was a pit and I was in that pit and I was screaming out for help. Yes. And the doctor came past and he wrote out a script. Yeah, my brother. Here's a script for you. Yeah. Then the psychiatrist came past and he said, you better come see me, you need something wrong, you need your cup written yeah. and read. And he wrote that again and gave me his card and I came back. <laughs> then the pastor came past and he prayed for me and he said, come to my church. <laughs> and he carried on walking because he had appointments. Yeah. <laughs> then a man came and he got into the pit with me. I said to him, what are you doing? I'm going to get out the pit screaming for help and you come down and get in the pit with me. He said, yes, the reason I'm getting into the pit is because I've been there and I know the way out. Yeah. Oh, amen. You have to walk the road. Yeah. If you've never walked the road, don't talk. Right. Are you picking on a word? So again, to everyone tonight, to Rista, Perfect master of ceremonies, thank you very much. Absolutely perfect. To Greer, with your bubbly personality. To uh, Nicole and Co, who are going to sing your amazing great. And sing it nicely because I've heard it a couple of times. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> to Stefan, thank you very much. And to every single person here. We will take this in our hearts tonight. Yeah. This is our night. Right. And those who are not here missed out. We didn't miss out. We were in. We here. Yeah. And last, least, last but not least, Pastor Lebo and your wife. Thank you, sir, for what you've done to us and done for us. And, and you know, of those who, who don't know, five of the men who have been on our farm have been baptized in here. That's right. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah.